All right, guys, today we are going to be talking about the ProTech Malibu. And moreover, we're going to be going over a little bit of a, doing like more of a breakdown and review of this guy, this bad boy, and talking about my personal experiences with it, what I think about it, and some of the alterations and changes I've had to make with or to my ProTech Malibu to get it where I like it. So first off to go over, uh, because a lot of people comment and ask where can they get this Malibu. To start off, this particular Malibu is a um, Blade HQ exclusive. It's a CPMS 45 VN blade steeled uh, Malibu. And so this one is not um, one that is like available anymore. It was a limited sprint run. So first things first, there is that. So I can't leave any links for this one, but it is a ProTech Malibu. So do with that what you will and check one out if you want. Now, why did I end up with a Malibu? Primarily, I have really wanted a manual button lock folding knife for quite some time. I thought they were rather novel and I do have my Civivi Cubit. Um, and so that one is in my <clears throat> collection. I liked it just fine, but there are some issues with it, particularly when you like flick it out. It isn't always the best or it sometimes like fails to lock. So I wanted a very solid American made um, button lock that was not an auto because I have my ProTech um, SNG auto and that one's fine, but once again, it is an auto. So I wanted one that was manual and the ProTech Malibu for me is what really seemed to be like just the right one. So anyways, I got this one from Northern Knives in particular and they just so happened to have it and it was cool and yeah. So that's kind of how I ended up with it. I wanted a Malibu for a while. I really liked the reverse Tonto and the CPM S45 V and for me is definitely my kind of style. I like Magna Cut S45 VN um, a little bit more. It's probably one of my more favorite steels, but anyways, another story for another time. So that is the ProTech Malibu that I have in particular and it's kind of reason why I ended up with it. So overall, what do I think about it so far? So overall, I think it's a pretty darn cool knife. It is a, as far as blade shape goes, a very slicey, very EDC friendly, as you guys can probably tell with this very deep um, reverse Tonto blade shape. It is a very, <clears throat> EDC friendly knife for opening packages, breaking down cardboard, doing all those kinds of things. In addition to that too, handles super comfy, not a single problem with that, no hot spots, nothing that really stands out. I also kind of like, and I believe this is ex a exclusive to this knife, but this little black, um, like small little lanyard here, I find it super handy, super nifty. Um, I'm a big fan of like really small, low key lanyards. I don't like things that are huge unless it's on my Emerson's for all other reasons, but overall really super small lanyards like this just work very well for me. Um, but aside from that, yeah, it's pretty cool. Blacked out DLC is kind of a, a bit of a vibe for me. Um, sometimes I like my blacked out knives, not always, but this one just so happens to work well in my opinion and for its overall look and kind of shape. So outside of that, um, my kind of usage impressions and experience with this knife. So first off, it was not the best knife when I got it. And when I got it, it was like new in box. It was used, of course, Northern Knives got it uh, secondhand, but when I had gotten it um, or when they had sold it to me, it is still at its stock, you know, like out of box blade on it. It was pretty unused. Probably the original owner just didn't like it, didn't really carry it. So for me, it was like new in box. However, with that blade, um, what I particularly found, and I'm not sure if this is true across the board for Malibus, I kind of have heard this um, from other people that have owned Malibus, is that the bevel is pretty high on these guys. So what that means is that when I originally um, sharpened this knife because I just took it down to 20 degrees per side. I want to say it was probably about 25 to 27 degrees per side uh, on the angle for the edge. So what that means is it was pretty darn obtuse. And honestly, when it came to slicing things like cutting things, it did just fine, but taking a long like slicing stroke um, just did not work. It was not very clean. It tended to tear a lot and it was kind of weird because it was like it felt like a sharp blade, right? Like the, the steel stock 
felt sharp, but because of that very high and obtuse angle, it just wasn't really cutting. So like I said, I leaned it back to 20 degrees, which already for me, like I tend to lean more towards like 17 degrees per side angle. So I was like 20 degrees is pretty conservative for me. So I took it down to 20 and after I had done that, it has really, really improved. It does a much, much better job at slicing, cutting, draw cuts, um, just so much better. So I will say after you know making that alteration to the cutting edge, um, it definitely is a lot better. Outside of that, I really haven't done much to it. I think it's just fine. I think it's uh, like a good, useful knife. Um, I did obviously put some KPL in it when I tore it down and put it back together. Um, I will say this thing is a little bit of a pain in the butt to take down and put back together. That's why I did not do a teardown video on it, but it is easy enough. It's just that with any button lock knife you do, there's a lot of springs in the mechanism of the button lock that you have to kind of fiddle with. But outside of that, it is just fine. So. Overall, my impressions of the Malibu are two things I dislike. The out-of-box edge, I will say, like I said, I, like it was coming in at about like 25 to 27 degrees per side angle. I think that's way too obtuse for, in particular, everyday carry knives. Um, you know, if it's a wilderness, you know, heavy, hard use survival knife, that's not a horrible edge angle to have, depending on what you need. But for me, especially, like I was saying, especially with standing um, EDC stuff I think that that is too like way too obtuse so dislike that and then the other thing I dislike and it's not entirely um, unique to the Protec Malibu is Protex deep carry clips I really dislike these guys I know I've mentioned this in another video but these guys the way that they're built and how thin the clip material is it really tends to get bent and uh, yeah it just loses its tension so I'm not the largest fan of Protex like deep carry clips like these ones that have the internal screws like so like deep carry and so this one the Protec Runt also has a similar clip not the largest fan of those clips but aside from that um, it's overall a pretty dang good knife I will say very smooth as you guys can see with the action it is pretty darn buttery smooth now like I said it does run on bearings so it should be that way but it is smooth so it's it's worth pointing out it's worth noting and talking about so anyways guys Hopefully you enjoyed the video on my breakdown and review of the Protec Malibu. I know it's not a super new knife. It's also not super old, but it is a really cool blade. And I definitely think that it is, and I've, I've done other videos kind of talking about this, but I think it is one of those knives that gives other knives like the Benchmade uh, 940 Osborne a really good run for its money. Once again, both are reverse tanto. Both are you know about the same size, about the same thickness and blade shape, obviously. Um, or blade stock, I should say, and obviously the Protec Malibu, about the same price point, I should say, too. But the Protec Malibu is a little bit newer, comes in a little bit better steels. So, anyways, take it, take that for what it's worth. As always, guys, God bless, and I'm out.